This is another episode of Dangerous Ideas. My name is Sean Canungo. I'm an innovation strategist. What we do is we break down concepts and frameworks that will change your life. Oh, wow. Hey, my name is Sean Canungo. This is another episode of Dangerous Ideas. In this podcast, what we do is we break down concepts and frameworks that will change your life, change your business, but most importantly, really change your life. We got a special guest in the building and we are in a new building. We're here at the Art Gallery of Alberta. I just watched a magnificent presentation from best-selling author, uh, incredible thinker, Sam Demma. Sam, do you want to say hello to the audience? Honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Sean, on Dangerous Ideas. Man, it was, it was a trip watching you do your presentation for like an hour and a half. I, everybody in the presentation was locked in. I was locked in. Uh, just a beautiful storyteller, man. And I know in, in this pod, well, I'm not going to give your background. This is not about the It's about dangerous ideas at the end of the day. But, like, where do you, like, your, your, your ability to storytell, where, where do you get this gift from? I don't know, man. <laughs> I think for me it comes from my repetition in the game. Yeah. Like, I think about my experience as an athlete growing up. The only way you could improve was by kicking a ball 100 times. Right. I've done, like, 600 shows in the past five and a half years in schools and at events in tiny little venues for rotary clubs when I was just getting started. Like, I think the reps help build this skill set that I share today. Man, it's crazy to think about how many events that you do in a year. Like, I look at your schedule and like, I, 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 I think your schedule is crazy. My schedule, I show people my <laughs> schedule, they're like, this is, they, they want to faint. I look at your <laughs> schedule, I want to die. It's crazy, <laughs> man. Like, you're just back to back to back to back to, in schools, you know, across North America, across the world. Um, man, and, and you look fit, you look healthy. How do you, how do you, what are you eating? How do you train, like, when you have, like, this crazy tour? Yeah, man, um... I follow the Sean Canungo diet, man. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm on the dad bod diet, man. No, you got something else. What, what are you eating? Tell me what you're eating. You wake up in the morning, what are you doing? I have a coach. His name's Dylan. Dylan sends me a fitness plan. I eat what Dylan tells me to eat okay. um, in a certain but you, dude, set of no, parameters. But you're, you're traveling. What do you mean? You can't... So I, I try to make sure I don't miss a meal. So I'll eat breakfast, I'll eat lunch, I'll eat dinner. I'll hit a workout at a good life. I have the Cross Canada yep. uh, pass in North in uh, the states. I go to Anytime Fitness, so it's non-negotiable that I eat my meals, get eight hours of sleep, and I hit a workout. Yeah, those three activities keep me feeling amazing and showing up at my best. Okay, man. Well, yeah. I'm gonna ask you some questions about that later because that that's what I want to unpack, man. Because you look too good to be on the road this much, or maybe it's just me. Okay, li listen. The first dangerous <laughs> idea is this. Yeah. The Jordan mindset. Now, let me describe this. Michael Jordan was famous for any time somebody would say something about him, the newspaper, the media, somebody would say something, he would remember that. He would stick it in his mind. And he would use that as fuel in the next game, and he would drop 30, 40, whatever, on people's heads because he knew what they said. Mm. You told me something at dinner in December. I will remember this dinner forever. You told me the story about how this agency, this guy, came to you with this like big promise that you know, we're gonna we're gonna take you everywhere. We're gonna we're gonna give you everything. And you thought about it, and you were thinking, man, I, it seems a little too like something seems off about this. And the guy, and then you you actually rejected his offer. And he told you something at that moment. What did he tell you? He said, mark this day down as the best or worst decision you ever made in your entire life. Wow. That, and that, that's the coldest shit I've ever heard in my entire life. Somebody, so, so, and then what you told me, it's like, that's been your fuel. Like, that's what you think about. That's why you, you know, that's why you, you, you've been hustling in this game, evolving and innovating in this game because you heard that. You're a psychopath. And I could let That's that... Jo you got the Jordan mind <laughs> mindset. And I could let it go, right? Like, I'm at a place now where everything that I wanted to happen is happening to a certain degree. I'm starting to think about what's the next step or what's the next thing. Um, but in those moments where I get complacent, I bring that memory back in my head. Um, and it's been fueling me and, and, and will continue to fuel me. I think the thing that... 
impacted me the most about that conversation is that this was someone that I genuinely wholeheartedly look up to and wanted to be like right. and aspired to be and flew to their their state in the US to go and meet them and bought their courses and their programs. And so to, to hear that from your hero, wow, it just, it shocked me. And I remember I finished the call. I went for a run around the block, bawling my eyes out. I got home, pulled out my calendar, added an event, January 1st, 2020, best decision I ever made in my entire life. Wow. And in the difficult moments, I think of this individual. In the difficult moments where I don't want to show up, I think of this individual. So do you, will, will you ever go back to the individual and be like, hey, listen, buddy. You, and, and by the way, this person m will definitely not even remember this moment. No. He's not going to remember that you said that thing. Yeah. But are you going to go back to him one day and remind him like this was the fuel? And do you, are you a psychopath in that way? Like, do you need <laughs> this fuel? Do you need that? Do you need like a hater, a doubter to... To, to give you that so that you can go off and do incredible things. Do you need somebody to do no, that? No, I don't. Okay. I don't need it. It's not necessary. Because Jordan needed it. That's the Jordan mindset. I yep. think he needed somebody to like hit at him so that he could like achieve greatness. I think for me, the thing that fuels me more than a hater than this situation is the first dream I had as a young person and not being able to bring it to life due to injuries uh, with athletics. Yeah. And the fall apart of that dream fuels everything that I am today. Yeah. Um, I think that will keep me going for the rest of my life and pursuing my, my highest potential in this, in this work. Man, I, I, I just, I remember that story so much because, you know, there are things that people say in your life, whether it's good or bad, that you, it just sticks with you. And you, you, the other person may not even think about it, but it's like, it just, it just, it can stick yeah. and you just remember those moments. You know, uh, I shared this on a previous podcast. Um, it, it, it's this idea that, um, you know, just, just sharing your raw emotions about, you know, somebody, and you talk about this a lot, just the ability to like, in the moment, like if you love somebody or you, somebody's doing something good, like share it, like let them know. Mm. And you have no idea how much that can help their lives. Like, it could change their entire trajectory. On one of my last pods, I talked about Jerry Seinfeld. He, like, one of his friends was like, hey, I, th I, 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 I think you could do this. And that fueled him for so many years. Um, I don't know if you, I, I don't know if that's happened in your life where somebody just said something like, Sam, you like, man, you're really a gifted storyteller. You're a great speaker. And, and that was your fuel. You've done that, man. What? You did not for me. Okay. I've had many people. Um, one of my best friends is a guy named Lucas, and he's an entrepreneur. We used to go to LinkedIn local events when we were both 19 years old, okay. wanting to build businesses. We'd sit in the front row in our dress shirts and khaki pants. <laughs> We'd raise our hands first, ask questions, even if we didn't know what the hell we were that's asking about. Hey, that's LinkedIn energy. That's good. <laughs> that's good LinkedIn energy. You sit in the front row. You put up your hand, you wear a dress shirt, that's LinkedIn energy. Hey, man, didn't you see that post recently? What's that? Guy was on one knee proposing to his wife, and he's like, here's a proposal to my wife, taught me about B2B sales. Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> but you know what? You know what? I, gotta, I, gotta, I see a lot of, see, it's funny because um, I, I always think that that's like fake. Yeah. Because there's, there's actually a new role, which is like LinkedIn trolls. They just ah. create like the cringiest stuff, and then they put it on Twitter. Because people on Twitter and TikTok hate LinkedIn. Mm. But anyways, that, that's just funny. So, so yeah, LinkedIn local event. Is this, was this put on by Swish, by the way? It was put on by Swish. Okay, man. I love Swish, actually, <laughs> man. Hey, he actually, I actually put a video up of him today. He was like, he was on this podcast. He's like, who's your favorite... Uh, uh, speaker of all time. He's like Sean Canungo. I was like, shit! <laughs> I came across that that podcast yeah. randomly. Crazy. I was just listening to it, and he dropped my name. So shout out to Swish. Just Swish was one of absolutely my go. massive inspirations too when we were wow. just getting started. He was like an idol in the an icon in the Toronto LinkedIn community. Still is. Yeah. He still puts on events every now and then. Love it. Anyway, me and Lucas would just push each other, and we'd push each other, and we'd become like brothers to a degree. And recently, I'll tell him some of my dreams and goals, one of which, which I've shared with you, is to pack Scotiabank Arena in the next five years. And Love there's it, certain people in our lives who, when we share goals like that with, they'll say, dude, you're crazy. Like, there's no way you're going to do this. Lucas looked at me straight in my eyes, and he was like, why not three years? Woo! 
And I Let's was like, go, baby. So there's a moment, right, where my friend believed in me more than I believed in myself. And I was like, damn. And I just, I think about it all the time. Uh, to the point where, like, I actually put this as my lock screen, man. Get, 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 get the camera on this. Get the 19, camera on this. 19,800, Scotiabank Arena. Let me see it. Let me see it, baby. It's a consistent reminder for me. Wow. Um, this is the capacity of the venue. Yeah. Well, let me tell you. Lucas is one of those people for let me. me. Let me tell you, it is absolutely going to happen. And I'm not going to lie to you. This is another dangerous idea. Is um, stay close to the heat. And I said this when you came into the building. Yeah. Is... You know what Drake does really well? I don't want this turned into the Drake podcast, <laughs> but Dr you know what Drake does really well? He stays close to the heat, hmm. meaning the reason why Drake's been so popular is that he understand like he understands who's popping. He 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 will he will do collaborations. He will he will put on people that are that he thinks are incredible, right? Whether it's Twenty One Savage or Future Jack or Harlow. you know Jack Harlow, like he'll put people on yeah. as well, and he likes to stay close to the heat. And you are scorching hot. And not only am I inspired by you, not only am I inspired, like <laughs> not only am I inspired by you, but I actually think th this is it's absolutely inevitable because. I just see your talent, and we, we chopped it up uh, for the first time in person in December. Mm. And I said, man, in the game right now, and I said this on a podcast, I said it to your face, like, you are the guy that inspires me. Because what you're doing around the content, your cadence, like, how you're moving right now, you're on an unstoppable train. And I just want to, like, I just want to keep watching you. So that's why, man, when, you, when I saw that you were coming to Edmonton, I said... Yo, I need Sam to calm down. I, I need you to come through and, and meet the team because absolutely love what you're doing. And I'm staying close to the heat. As an old man, I'm staying close ah. to the heat. And this guy's scorching hot. So, man, I appreciate you coming through. Well, isn't that crazy? Because, like, I look up to you for the same reasons, man. I, I want to do I want to do big shit together. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Man. The panda and the grasshopper. You know? <laughs> hey, man. That's awesome. But no, I I love that idea that you that you put that down. But th there is something to be said that, um, you know, th th this this massive dream. Like, how do you how do you make it a reality? I actually yeah. don't. I don't. I know this sounds crazy. Yeah. I don't really believe in massive dreams. Yep. I just believe in putting in the work. Mm. And it's like. Waking up every single day and just putting in action. It's about receipts. Yeah. And it's about collecting them at the end of the night. Yep. Instead of like just talking about it. Talking about it. And I'm not saying that you're just talking yeah. about it. But what do you think about this idea of like putting in the work, the action, the receipts versus, you know, dreaming big? Because I know lots of people that you know, they want to be, you know, they want to be on Oprah. They want to be this. They want to be that. And it's like, okay, dude, when is this going to happen? You, 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 I talked to 100 people, 99 people, they want to do something, right? Yeah. They want to go to Mars, but it never happens. Yeah. I think building a track record with yourself of following through is the first step. Yeah. For me, I was like, yo, I'm going to start speaking. I started speaking. I'm going to build a better presentation. I joined Toast, Toastmasters, got coaches, started putting in reps, built a better presentation. I'm going to get my visa so I can work in the U.S. Spent two years, finally got the requirements for that, secured my visa. I'm going to do a tour across Canada. Booked it by myself, 87 shows Oof. in my grandma's minivan, built the team, took it across the country. I'm going to launch a book, self-published the book, sold over 5,000 copies. I'm going to launch a podcast, interviewed over 300 educators across North America. I'm going to go to Africa, bring in the I tour saw. to Kenya for seven weeks. We're doing 35 shows in front of 30,000 students in, in Kenya. And so I built this... Talk your shit, baby! Yeah, thank you. Come on! I feel like I've built this... Um, yeah, you keep going. And I believe I built it. this record. Of, That's I'm, I'm going to tell you first, and then I'm going to show you. And, and it's, not even, it's not even to show people, like, oh, look at me. Look how amazing I am. No, for me, it's like, I want to show you what's possible. And I'm going to say it first as a receipt so that when it does happen, you can look back and go, damn, he said he was going to do this. And then it becomes a game for me. Because now I'm saying I'm going to do it, and if I don't, I feel like a dummy. 
Love it, man. Well, listen. So maybe I, I, I am psychotic. I want to say this. I want to say this. I want to say this. I am so happy that you pulled up your phone on the Dangerous Ideas Pod because we're gonna when you sell that bitch out, we 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 are gonna use that as clout, and then we are gonna run some ads on that shit so they know where you said it. Where you said it first, you said it here on the pod. Hey, uh, nineteen thousand seven hundred and ninety nine seats. Because Sean already has one in the front row, yeah. okay? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I thought I would be open for you, but it's all good. It's all, I mean, it's all good. It's all good, no, man. I'm playing. I'm playing. Uh, uh, no, but, I, you know, to share something privately with, with uh, you know, with the, with the group. Um, so when we met up in, in, in December, I said, you got to watch this. You got to watch this documentary. Yeah. I think you watched it that night. I did, man. Yeah. Which was uh, Headliners Only. Yeah. Chris Rock, Kevin Hart. Yeah. They were like on Dave tour. Chappelle. Uh, Dave, uh, he came on stage in one of the shows. Yeah, oh yeah, Dave Chappelle yeah. came on stage, right? But it was really a Chris Rock, uh, Kevin Hart thing. And I said, man, watch that. That's me and you, man. Let's go. Yes, sir. You, and, um, you know, so I, I, I honestly believe that, you know, if you, if you think about it, you put something in. It, it's not even about, like, dreaming big. It's about putting in the actions, putting in the receipts, and just just... You know, in the rear view, just just putting it out there to say, okay, I, I know at least I have a, a North Star. I think it's important to have a North Star. Yep. Absolutely. And so I, so I love that uh, for you. So I'm going to ask you a question. I asked this to some of my guests, which is the LeBron James question. And the LeBron James question is, you know, LeBron spends a million dollars on his body every single year. Yeah. Um, thinking about you, your career, where would you put, if I give you an extra million dollars, where would you put that extra million dollars? Uh, and let's put it towards your business. Like, wh- where would you put that extra million dollars into your business? Yeah, good question. I would take the first 10% and invest it in learning from people who are 10 steps ahead of me, whether that's hiring coaches, spending time in rooms with people who are doing the things that I want to do. Wow. Um, I'd probably take another 10% of that and invest it in, like, the team, building a group of people. Uh, I'll take 10% and invest it in content, like, the media side of things. Um that leaves us with 700000 <laughs> I think I would take uh, some of the money and use it on experience, experiences, not that are just about traveling, but... Uh, this guy took the question as like a portfolio manager, I'm, man. I, I, I <laughs> thought you were going to go all in on something. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I, would, I, think I, would dis, I would think I would distribute it. I think I'd distribute it on content, team, uh, learning, and then experiences that would help me live more life to draw from more things when I'm standing on stage. Yeah. Um, and then I would give some to my parents. <laughs> you would give some to your parents. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you, you, did, you did treat it like a, a portfolio manager. No, the reason why I'm asking that is because it's like, um, it's the interesting because what, Le, what LeBron does, he, he actually spends his million dollars yeah. on his existing competitive advantage. Mm. So what he's doing, it's like, I already am the most gifted athlete on the face of the planet, guess what? Mm. I'm just gonna pour another million on there mm. so that I actually extend my lead. Mm. And to me, I find that really, I, I actually think that's an incredible, yeah. yeah, it's an incredibly smart move. It's like, how do you differentiate yourself from everyone else? And yeah, it could be around like, how do yeah. I diversify myself? Yep. But for him, it's like, how do I just Diamond. double down on the thing that has given me this gift, mm. right? So I, I, I don't know, based on that, analogy would you yep. change your answer um or are you still in the process of like like i you know to me you 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 are like it's funny because you, watching you it's like it looks like you've been like decades in the game you know in terms of storytelling and just how gifted you are as a performer but you're still very young so it's like you have so much more to like, I don't even, that's why I said right after the keynote, like, I don't even know what you're going to do in 10 years. Like, I think you're going to be so scary. You're going to add all these pieces, mm. the, 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 com- the comedy, the, 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 yeah, just so many pieces. I think I haven't figured out the thing yet, to be transparent. Like, I, I, I am just now starting to take acting classes. Yeah. I'm just now starting to do stand-up comedy. Wow. I've been speaking for the past six years. So I'm trying to figure out, like, where all this ends up going. Yeah. Um... I think once I gain some more clarity around that, I'll know where to put the money. I'm also not afraid to invest. Like I, in my first year of business, we did like 30,000 
which is like by no means a successful business if you're supporting a family. And then I hired a coach for $28,000. My wow. parents were like, you're giving some man $28,000? Yeah. And it was like the, all, all, all the money I made. Um, and then I hired him again two more years in a row. It changed my life. Wow. Like totally changed the trajectory of my pathway. So I think for me, the biggest bucket I would put money in is, on, is in myself. I don't know exactly what it would look like. Yeah. I don't know if that's investing in content or pouring it into coaching or putting it behind marketing for big shows or hiring the team, but I'm always going to bet on me no yeah. matter how much money you give me. It's just going to be in different pockets. Just thinking about your colleagues, the people that you went to school with, the people that you graduated with. You know, uh, I'm assuming some people went off, they became accountants and doctors and yeah. consultants and like eye bankers and whatnot. And do you, are, 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 are people jealous of where you are? Or are you jealous of where they are? Or like, yeah, tell me what, because just being in your, being in your 20s is a crazy time. Because you're, you're still learning about yourself. You're still trying to figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life. You have social media, so you're looking at everything and what everyone's doing, and you're on TikTok and you're seeing all this. Sh like, it's exhausting, right? When I was in my 20s, I, you know, we had social media, but it was like, it, 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 it wasn't as chaotic as it seems right now. So tell me, t tell me like, what your friends say or what you think of y your friends and, and yeah. I love Reflect it. On that. I love it that I have buddies that are doing things that are totally different than what I'm doing. Yeah. Because we get to share in each other's worlds and experiences. My friends are some of the most supportive people in my life. I, I think I'm also the most supportive of my friends and their goals and dreams. Uh, I think although we're traveling down different pathways, most of us, if, if they're in my group, share this hunger for building a better life, uh, for providing more for their friends or their future family. Um, for having unique experiences. And so I think all of us are happy for one another. Yeah. I wouldn't for a second go back and change my choices any way, shape, or what, form. What, what do you think is the biggest mistake for 20 year olds though? Is doing something that somebody else wants them to do. Okay. Uh, living a life that's not their own. Uh, making decisions to please their parents, their friends, or their grandparents, or anybody else in their lives. But do you think that's a struggle today because there's so many 20-year-olds, they're, they're, they're growing up in an environment where it's like it's so hard to like buy a house or yeah. like, you know, you look at inflation, look at costs, like that hasn't caught up with a salary. So, you know, when you're starting out, you're like, shit, like I, I actually need to make some money, maybe do something that I don't want to do in life so that I can actually go off and pay the bills. Like, I don't know if you're seeing that or if your friends are struggling with that. Uh, my friends are all doing jobs that they say they wanted to do since they were little kids. Oh, okay. Uh, well, two of them are. They, they wanted to be in consulting, and, and they're doing it. And, yeah. uh, but it's funny, because like when I talk to them, sometimes they're talking about their extended time off and how excited they are for the, right. the weeks off so they could build this other thing. Right. And so I had that experience, too. Like I didn't just jump in, actually, cold feet and start speaking. Uh, I worked full-time as a server at a restaurant working the night shift. So I'd start at six and finish at 11 so that if I got a speaking engagement at a school during the day, I could still do it. Wow. And so I was working seven days a week, first bussing tables at the keg, then hosting, then serving. And at the same time, for a two year period of time, I was hustling, trying to book gigs. Yeah. And it finally got to a point where the amount I was making doing speaking started overflowing uh, onto the amount I was doing working at the keg and I made the decision to quit. And so I don't want to for a second portray this ultimate poise that I just I just started and all of a sudden I was making money. No, no, no. No, well, like I had two years where I was doing stuff I didn't want to do. Yeah. And then multiple years before working other random jobs. Well, I mean, think about your schedule now. Like, I yeah. don't think... I, I, no one wants very, <laughs> Actually, very few people yeah. on the planet yeah. would want to do this unless they are, you know, meant to do this. And you are obviously somebody that is, that is meant to do this. And, um, you know... Let it's, me ask you this. Yeah. You left this, you left CPA, you left the accounting world, and you were doing that for years, and you probably thought that was your dream since you were a little kid. How did you build the courage to walk away from that after being in it for such a long period of time? Yeah, you know, I, I was in accounting for, you know, maybe a couple of years, then okay. I went to consulting after that for, for more than a decade. And I love consulting. Like it was it was incredible. But I always I started to see the shift like when I was at the firm, 
that actually people follow people, not the firm. And then I started to see, as I started to build content and IP and my own brand and all this, like, I'm like, wait a minute, like, people are wanting to work with me. They want to work with, uh, uh, you know, with my ideas and my people and like, what we're bringing to the table. I'm like, what kind of damage could I do just working for myself? And I, and I am not somebody, you know, I wrote this, the book not for people to like leave their jobs and do something else. I actually think that you can, but it's the idea that, you know, you can create your own power and, and you can do that just through so many different ways. And, I'm, and I basically just created my own power um, by creating content and doing speeches and building incredible connections and, and, and showcasing my passion and ideas. And yeah, that, that's how I was able to make that shift. And it wasn't difficult for me because it's like, I just led with my, with my passion. I just led with you know, the things that I love. And yeah, I haven't worked a day in my life in like decades. That's amazing, man. It's incredible, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So g give me, g I want, you know, you, you've been watching me from afar. I want, I, want, I, want, I want you to give me some advice. Give me some advice. Advice? You look, yeah, you look at me as a as a as a as a older uh, scholar as an older gentleman t give me some advice because, <laughs> because i i'm here as a drake i'm here as drake you know you're 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 the heat okay <laughs> so tell me where how, how, like if you look at me from afar tell me give me some advice what do you think i should be focusing on i think you should make every says take some notes guys <laughs> all right let's take some notes the heat is talking <laughs> give me some advice um I feel underqualified giving you no, advice, man. No, man. No, you got it. You got the My, Riz Walk number one. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta improve the Riz Walk. Yep. yep. Uh, okay. Number two. Number two. Um, we kind of both struggle with this, but I think you should up your clothing game. Yes. 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 I, I wow. Deep cut, baby. Deep cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why do you say that? Uh, I think we always expect keynote speakers to go on stage wearing a suit and a dress shirt and dress pants and nice yeah. shoes. And like, there's this cool opportunity to break the mold there and be bold in the way you show up in your Dude, clothes. Dude, I, I love like, this idea. You know, I've always like thought, man. You know, like you ever see like League Fits? You ever see League Fits? Like, no. So League Fits is like this um, this basketball channel. Yeah. Where they basically, you know, before a game, all the NBA players they they got they got they're going to the tunnel yeah. and they're just walking. The camera's just there and they're walking yeah. and they're wearing <laughs> something really drippy, right? Yeah. But I'm just wearing like. Just a suit. Yeah. So I want to. I Yo, but your suits are that. nice. You know no. what I'm saying? Like ah. they're nice suits. I just feel like if you showed up like a rock star, yeah, people would be like, "Who is this Dude, guy?" Dude, the, the the couple this week or yeah, this this week, last week on Monday, I like uh, on Tuesday, I came out with a uh, with a country hat. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. And okay. the music too. It was crazy. And the music came out yeah. to uh, some some country music. So yeah. I'm trying. I feel like I'm 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 reaching for ideas here. No, that's good. I think you're doing Con give me some. Good. What about content? Because you are you are creating some incredible content. You're editing. You're posting things up. Like that is you know I'm looking at what you're doing from a content perspective, and we post a lot of content. But like what you're doing and capturing the footage is incredible. So what's working for you? Um, what you're doing right now, like capturing everything you can, um, and then I just drop it into a, a document and have someone else with their own perspectives chop up pieces they think other people would enjoy watching. Yeah. That's been working for me really well. When I think about innovation, I think about, uh, I think about people that are doing bold things. Yeah. I also think about kids. I think kids are very innovative and they have mm. unique ideas. I think you could do a cool series like interviewing little kids about what they think are innovative ideas. I like that. Um, I like that. I think there could be something there unique. Sometimes they say the most bold, outrageous things. I like that. Um, Content-wise, ah, yeah, man, I don't have much else for you. I think you just got to keep pushing. Man, I love that. Well, I appreciate that. Um, Maybe just for, because we're ending the pod, maybe you should just show the camera how to do a Riz walk, and then I will, I will follow up and do my Riz walk. All so. right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, so. All right, this is, uh, this is what a Riz walk actually looks like before uh, this, uh, this uh, aged gentleman over here, this, <laughs> this fine bottle of wine does it. Yes. Uh, here's what it looks like. <clears throat> oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's how you instantly pick up your shorty, all right? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I saw, I saw you do this with the other leg last time. So it, it goes... It goes. So, so you're going to turn your right hand out like this. Yeah, yeah. And then you're going to step your right foot as far forward as you can, but you're going to turn your right toes yeah. toward the wall. Yeah. And you're going to step as What's far forward. What's my face should look like? You know, what, what, what should my face look Just like? Just bite your bottom lip. <laughs> you know, you know, 
You know, I don't need a walk because I do. I, I just walk in with ribs. But okay, this is fine. So just just slide. Just show me again. Show me yeah, again. Yeah, you gotta just, slide. You gotta slide. Oh, okay, okay. Say, I got, it. I got, it. I got. It. Okay, watch. Don't tear your ACL. No, right? no, it's all good. It's all good. Watch, watch this. <laughs> what's up, baby? Yo, that number what's, one. What's, what's up, baby? <laughs> what's up, baby? You looking at me, baby? How's that? Not bad, right? <laughs> I'm looking at me. Are you still want some advice or no? <laughs> Listen, brother, I really appreciate you coming through, man. And, and, and I say this with peace and love, man. We, you, we are, we are going to sell out that arena. We're well, going to do it. I'm going to be your opener. But, man, no, I, I, I'm together. just inspired by what you're building. That's why I want to, you know, I want to take some of that heat, bring you here to Edmonton. You're doing some amazing things. Thanks. Thank you for being on the pod. Thanks, brother. Rate, review, subscribe, whatever you've got to do. We'll see you on the next one. Appreciate peace. it. Peace.